Rafi Musiker now commands the USS Excelsior. Elnor is the first fully Romulan cadet at Starfleet Academy, and Guinan calls Saurian Brandy Hooch. Hey, everybody, and welcome to <laughs> The Seventh Rule with Sirach Lofton. Hello, hello. My name is Ryan T. Husk, and uh, I'm wearing a special jacket today, even though it's a hot day in, in L.A., but I am absolutely sure that I must wear my Picard jacket today, so I'm going to be burning through that. Uh, today, we're doing a review <laughs> of Picard Season 2, Episode 1, entitled Stargazer. This episode is brought to you by our good friend, Tim Baum, a.k.a. Grandpa One. And we also like to give a special thanks to John Siegel and Susan Parker today. How are you, Sarah? Right. I'm good. I'm doing good. How are you? Um, well, like I said, it's kind of hot, but, <laughs> <laughs> but I'm so excited for this new Picard season and this new <sighs> Picard episode. I don't know if you could tell, but this thing says Picard on it. The back has a big. Uh, oh, yeah, it looks better in the light when you stood up a little bit because in the darkness, it was kind of difficult to see the detail. Mm -hmm. It looks like one of those, uh, you know, go out hiking, really yeah, comfortable. Pockets, have a nice... pockets yeah. in places you didn't know you had places. So um, yeah. anyway, great for some early morning Earl Grey tea, right? Yep. Piping cold. <laughs> as Laris sent him, uh, brought him some cold uh, Earl Grey. Okay, let's just get into it, Sirac. What did you think of this yeah. first episode of season two? A very good start to the season. I think they uh, made it big enough for us to kind of have a lot to contemplate going forward in this second season. I like the introduction of the Borg. I like the building up of this uh, inner conflict of whatever is going inside of Picard's mind. Um, and so we have these kinds of really good starts to the second season. I think they've uh, done a good job for that. Mm -hmm. Um. By the way, I'd be remiss if I didn't mention this jacket comes from the good people at Hero Within. Their um, customer service is outstanding. Met them at uh, Star Trek Las Vegas. They're really cool. Um, so we want to give a shout out to them. And uh, nice. man, I hope they come out with a Cisco jacket. Sirach, <laughs> I want you in a Cisco jacket so bad. That's yeah, if they do, yeah. I'll be there. <laughs> All right. Um, so. I was really impressed with this episode. Um, it's kind of like sometimes you forget. Like, I remember liking Picard, but when it picked up, I was like blown away. I was like, wait, was it always this good? And then I kind of tried to remember. I remember it being good, but like, oh, that's what I forgot. I was going to say at the top, my trivia was going to be, and Picard changes its tune in more ways than one because the character did, but also the 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 intro, intro was different it was a little darker a little heavier but it was still just gorgeous i love the music yeah i did ask myself did you know the first thing i wrote down was like oh new intro um yeah. so right away it was like oh okay i gotta sit and watch this intro because i don't want to miss anything um and yeah i did have a darker feel to the intro um some of the ships that they kind of were, were showing in yeah, I just had, had that feel, set the tone. Um, and then it just got, it started to get into it and unravel this story. At first I thought, oh, this is going to be slow. You know, the, it kind of started a little bit slow, you know, on the vineyard and, and this conversation he had with, is it Laris? Yeah. <clears throat> so they started with, the, with that. And then I realized, okay, so they're trying to build this, um, you know, show that, a love interest essentially for Picard, right? And or a non-love interest, I don't know, whatever you want to call it, but somebody that 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 they have feelings for each other and this kind of dynamic between him and his commitment to his duty, as he said. Um, 
which I thought was, there were some good speeches in there that I thought, you know, yeah. as Picard always does, he just goes into these really good kind of uh, speeches about, uh, you know, aphorisms or, or just just positive ways of, of putting perspective on things. And he's really good at uh, making those kind of uh, uh, statements in, in certain mm-hmm. areas. Yeah, I feel like Picard as a captain always kind of stood for um, our conscience or, you know, uh, our moral compass, you know, that his plays were always like morality plays. It was very like, you know, what's right and what's wrong. Uh, that's really what, what the next generation focused on and what he as a character focused on. We got to start calling Laris Polaris because that's like one of the best mega songs ever. Um, (laughs) the punishment do, I think is the other half of that. Anyway, uh no rest in peace anyway moving on from that <laughs> uh but her her husband joban died remember there were two of them and i think this right. probably takes place a year and a half or two years later i don't remember joban dying in season one if he did please correct me um everybody that's listening in or if sirak you know but you know she, she did yeah, explain i can't, I can't remember she did explain yeah. why they move on quickly. Cause you know, the first thing the fans are going to say is, Whoa, dude, slow down. You were just with this guy one episode ago. Maybe to you, it feels like forever ago <laughs> but to us. It was jarring. And so she says, you know, with Romulans, the best way to honor a past love is to love even more deeply when they're gone or something like that. I'm like, yeah, that's convenient. <laughs> that's convenient Romulans. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there were, th- that's actually one of the things that I had to get a perspective on when I was watching the episode was wh- how much time had elapsed since the last time we saw them, right? And I think um, um, the young character from the early on, the one that he's trying to save was like, you know... Um, Elnor? The, no, this is her name Elnor? The synthetic... Oh. Uh, no, oh, Soji, uh, Soji Berry. Yeah. Soji, Soji Berry, yeah. When Soji's at the table and she's making this kind of conversation, she's having this conversation, she, she says something to the effect that it's been one year after the Federation ended the ban on synthetics. So my, my guess was this is about a year. This is a year after we last saw them, essentially. Well, it's been at least a year and a half because when he was talking, when Picard was talking with Laris, they mentioned how her husband has been gone for a year and a half. Okay. So probably a year and a half, maybe two years, somewhere in there is probably where, where it last. So really same as, same as real time. Uh, Cause it's been about two years since the first season aired. Yeah. Um, I, I, I don't think that uh, he's being inappropriate. Actually, he was super appropriate. He was uh, actually reluctant and it was bothering him. So yeah. um, it was difficult for him to get past that. I thought it was a good intro. I love the little cheers, big ears line that he had in the yeah. beginning. That's toast. Cute. That's that's going to be my new line when I toast with any Vulcan or anybody <laughs> with big ears. <laughs> yeah. yeah. At yeah. your Romulan parties. <laughs> yeah. Um, I loved also in the opening that, uh, that this one was directed by Doug Aronofsky. Is that right? Mm. Yeah. Yeah. That's right. I should have mentioned that at the top. Yeah. And, um, he did some things that I thought were really good, um, visualistically. One of the things was the pullback from the scene with on earth all the way to the ship. And it was just this complete, like pullback, pullback, pullback and through space and, until you get to the ship. And I thought that's pretty beautiful. cool. I like that. Um, it was pretty, it was, it was beautiful. There were so many, I was just really, really impressed by this. And again, forgive me, everybody. I, I, I almost kind of forgot how great the first season of Picard was because two years have gone by, you know, there've been other series we've seen discovery since then and prodigy and lower decks, you know, so now we're coming right back to it. And I was just like, wow. The color, yeah. you know, the, the gold and black is kind of like this color scheme that they have kind of like in the background of uh, that mm-hmm. I've got here. And, you know, the imagery, the uh, the production design, the, the special effects, the visual effects are amazing. The music scoring, I, I, that Picard 
uh, theme song is definitely top three for me. And this altered version, we'll have to see, but it still has that same heart just in a more passionate or stressful, you know, delivery. Um, but there was just so many first episodes are tough because first episodes of new seasons are tough because you have so much you want to set up. You want to set up a whole story for an entire season, but you don't want Mm -hmm. it to be boring. You don't want it to be just filled with exposition, you know? So I thought they did a really good job of peppering in the exposition as we go. And when Picard is reuniting with seven and when, Dr. Gerardi is reuniting with Rios and they have these moments of, you know, of like being happy to see each other. I was happy that they were reuniting too, even though they were just together last episode, but it has been two years. So I thought they delivered that very well. And overall, uh, I thought this was a very good script and a very good episode. Yeah, and like you, I forgot how much I actually knew these characters and liked these characters yeah. already. So, you know, like, like Rios and Rafi, like, it, it's been so much time that has elapsed that I, I forgot how much I already know them and like them. Um, Dr. Agnes, I thought she gave a really great performance in that flirting scene where she was kind of yeah. playing like oh, and she's like, yeah, my last thing didn't end too well, you know, I kind of killed my ex-boyfriend. I, I thought, <laughs> I, I, I love the delivery on that scene. I thought her awkwardness and, and just the feel and pace of it was like spot I was, on. I was very impressed with her acting in that scene as well. And I made, I made a, a note of that. And again, I feel bad for being surprised. We shouldn't be surprised, but I was, I was like, wow, we didn't see this side of her. So of course it's, it's new, but anyway, I, I know I jumped over you there, but I just want to make sure like, no, I, yeah, you saw I totally that. agree. I mean, like, I, I could see her starring in a romantic comedy just off of that scene that I saw. Like totally. she could, she plays that kind of awkward nervousness thing. She can just carry a whole film with that kind of style. Of like a, a like a Drew Barrymore type, you know? Yes. Yes. Mm-hmm. Um, and also the, um, some of the, the lines that, you know, first of all, I wanted to say Elmore, that, that's his name, the uh, yeah. cadet. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> I, I was when I was watching it, I was thinking, man, I wish that Nog got that kind of a scene for uh, his for his uh, entrance into Starfleet Academy. I don't know if you wouldn't that, that be cool. And Captain Cisco is the one delivering the speech for the first fully Ferengi cadet in Starfleet Academy. Yes. Yeah, yeah that'd be amazing. Yeah. When I saw that scene, I was like, man, Nog deserved that moment because he did break, he broke his own barriers in the, in Starfleet right. Academy. So, um, so I would have loved to have actually seen that kind of a moment on Deep Space Nine. Um, I'm glad even, that they did do it here. I think even, not to trail off too much, but I think even the barrier that Nog broke was even more significant than the barrier that Elnor broke because... Yes, the Romulans were the Federation's enemies. So that is a big momentous occasion when your enemy starts to integrate and become, you know, one of your friends, right? But yeah. but the Romulans, nobody ever questioned that the Romulans could be good Starfleet material. You know, they're they're intelligent, they're sharp, right. they're great, you know, athletic, um, they're militant. But Ferengi. Nobody expects the Ferengi to be in Starfleet, whether they are your enemies, your friends, <laughs> what your investors. Well, that, that, there's no profit. In it. There's no yeah. pro, you know, there's no profit in, in it for them. So yeah. it, it's almost like against their their cultural uh, belief system. But mm-hmm. I think yes, it is a bigger barrier for uh, Nog to have to overcome, as far as you know, um, being accepted. But uh, nonetheless, they did make a, a tribute to Elnor and his um, in milestone, and I I yeah. like that kind of address. Um, the other thing is, you know, to um, to his credit, Patrick Stewart is fantastic at delivering these these kinds of lines that I mentioned earlier. These like epic kind of lines. One of them was, you know, the true final frontier is time. That's when he was delivering his speech at the kind of, you know, commencement at Starfleet. 
Yeah. Um, and I loved when he said, what we do in crisis weighs on us less heavy, heavily than what we do, what we could have done. Right. I think that's how the line is. Yeah. And that's, that's, you know, really poignant because people do tend to regret things they didn't do rather than the things they did do. And that's always, you know, I've heard that's always the number one thing that people say, you know, on their deathbed when, you know, when they've got one foot in and one foot out, their regrets are always what they did not do. And so this kind of rang true for me in that regard, that that seems to be kind of a common theme with, you know, humanity. Yeah. Um, I thought it was well done. Um, there were other moments too. I mean, this thing was just laced with a whole bunch of stuff, right? I mean, yeah. you had the, the Picard's mother and, and those kind of flashbacks, mm -hmm. um, which were confusing to me slightly. And I'd like you to maybe help me out with it. But I felt like as a period, it was from a period that would have been too far back before Star Trek and the technology that allows the Federation to exist was even developed. So it seemed like it was, you know, like 1930s or like at the Great Depression. And, right? Yeah, Is, I guess it would. I guess that time would be, you know, right after Star Trek, the original series, maybe like 10 to 20 years, you know, right, right at or after Star Trek. The, yeah, maybe 20 years after Star Trek, the original series, somewhere in there, which is 100 years after uh, Enterprise and like, you know, 10 years or 20 or 30 years after Discovery and Strange New Worlds. So, um, yeah, I mean, they, they live in the simple village on their simple vineyard, you know, and they definitely live that simple life. And there's like a, there's like an elegance to it. Um, you could see the crop dusters going by, which is super technology. Right. But other than that, they're practically living like it's the 1700s, you know, they're, they're just kind of walking around, tying their, their vineyards up, you know, uh, there's, a, there's a lot of charm there. Now, what I can't help you with, though, is information on his mother, because I don't remember her ever being mentioned. Um, so this was all new to me as well. And it took me a second to confirm to myself that it was his mom, because, you know, the first thing you, you assume is you're like, OK, older lady talking to a kid, it's Picard and his mom. But until we hear him say, mom, we can't confirm that. And I think what did confirm it was when she said, oh, don't worry, your father, blah, 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 blah. So I'm like, okay, that's his, his mom. Now, what I can help you with is a few of the things that were really cool to us Star Trek nerds. Number one was, who was it that was talking with the Deltons? I already forgot. Um, I think, oh, Soji. So Soji was talking with the Deltons. All those people with shaved heads, those mm -hmm. were Deltons. Um, it's from one of the old original series movies. You see uh, this lady with a shaved head and those robes. So we recognize that right away. And then they even mention it saying, oh, she's entertaining Deltons. And all the nerds are like, oh my God, it's Deltons, right? The <laughs> other thing that was really cool was the Stargazer, which was the ship that Rios is captaining. The Stargazer is also the name of the first ship that Picard captained. So his first captaincy before he went to the Enterprise was the Stargazer. So it, it's really sweet when they mentioned the Stargazer that it's another, a new one with the same name. It makes everybody go, oh my God, that's so cute. So freaking cute. I put cute in my notes with like 15 U's, but yeah. <laughs> those were the big parts. Yeah. Um, I, I thought that the robotic wine label makers were cute. I was like, wow, look how they beam on those wine label makers, wine labels. Yeah, adorable. Um, <laughs> I thought that was really adorable. Um, but let's not also forget the, uh, you know, the big cameos in this episode, 
as well. And we had um, Whoopi Goldberg uh, mm-hmm. reprising her old character, her Guinan character, right? Yep. Yeah. And I didn't get much of her. I obviously, you know, that character is like left an impression because of not only the style of dress, but just it's because it's Whoopi Goldberg. And, you know, we that image is kind of, you know, etched into Star Trek legacy. Totally. Um, and so it was kind of it was good to see her again back in that flashy hat, rocking her outfits and and being adding a personal kind of I know you element to Picard where nobody else kind of has that kind of except for, let's say, Riker, who's mm-hmm. able to say that to that degree. Also, Troy, but, you know, th- th- somebody who really can say I know you, you know, and I thought yeah. that was great. You know, and we all knew Guinan was going to be in this. We we knew Whoopi was going to be here and Guinan and she was going to be Picard's friend and all that. We knew what to expect. Yet, when I saw the two of them together, it still, it still had this magical nostalgic moment of like, oh, two friends. Kind of like that feeling I had when, when Riker and Picard we're sitting on on that dock in, in Nepenthe. Like, I just had this moment where I was like, look, it's two old buddies. He kind of puts his arm around him and I freaking melted. The same kind of feeling here when, even though I was completely prepared for it, it still hit me when the two of them are sitting down together and just hearing the contrast in their voices was reminiscent of hearing their voices in 1990, for example. And it was really, it was really nice. He doesn't go over there asking for her, her for military advice or professional advice. He goes there to talk with her about personal things because that's the kind of relationship they have. They have that personal, deep friendship. It's really beautiful. Yeah, you can see it. Yeah, you can see it. Um, I like the intro line too, where he says, Admiral, and she's like, Admiral. <laughs> you'll always be she's like you'll always be captain to me you know like i don't care how high you get your ranking is you know you're captain um but in that in a nice you know friendly way not in a uh in a, in a negative way the other thing was um she's like you're pushing a century and i'm pushing several you know yeah and i love i love that line as well it's like uh let's not we're, you know, we're too old for this uh, back and forth <laughs> stuff. So yeah, I love that. I love the two of them together. You could tell that they have that closeness, that that relationship. You know, she's like, um, let me break out the good stuff. Forget this wine. We got to get to that next the level. Hooch. <laughs> the hooch. The hooch. Exactly. You know, I do want to point out there was another really cute nod to the next generation. And that was where Guinan Ten's bar. Now, um, you know, on Deep Space Nine, they had Quark's bar. The bar in the next generation on the Enterprise was called Ten Forward. Don't really know what that means, but it was called Ten Forward. That's where they always went to have their drinks. Um, And here on the planet, wherever Picard went, um, it said... Forward Avenue Historic District is what the sign said or the, the, the avenue, whatever, Forward Avenue. And her, the address of the building was 10. So, mm-hmm. her, so where she works is literally 10 Forward Avenue, which is a really cool little detail there, really cute. Yeah, that's going to be the next, the next place in my next bar when I open it up. 10 Forward, come on nice. down. Yeah. I like I like. <laughs> um also you know we got to see captain rios and um you know i always like rios and i like him i continue to like him i think he's doing really great as a captain too we're just getting to see the beginnings of that but um he seems to defer in certain moments you saw he he deferred to dr uh agnes at some point he's like trust me you don't want (laughs) to It's just easier to let it let it happen. <laughs> yeah. And and there and there, you know, the camaraderie is there. 
Yeah, one thing, um, one thing that did, you know, annoy my my nerdy self. I'm like, I love, I do love Starfleet and everything that it does, everything it stands for. And every once in a while, we get very nitpicky. Uh, this would normally be a time that I pull out the tie, but it's kind of time for the nitpick number one. But I'm wearing a, the whole <laughs> jacket. We're pretty good. I mean, I was just a little nitpicky about the fact on the stargazer rios is having a meeting with picard and gerardi and seven and i'm like doesn't rios have a, a first officer doesn't he have a senior staff it would just be weird if like captain cisco has three friends visiting him and then mm -hmm. the the dominion attacks and he goes all right me and my three friends are going to figure out what we're going to do and like kira and warf are like what? So what do you want me to do? We've been here Should for five years. And these guys have been here for five minutes and you're going to go with them. <laughs> it was a little weird. I wanted, I wanted to meet Rios's first officer at the very least. I wanted to see a little bit of his crew. I would have loved to see that in the meeting. Um, yeah, I, I think his crew got blown up in the first. <laughs> yeah, they did. <laughs> <laughs> they should have just explained it away with that. Um, but yeah, you know, really, ultimately, the Borg is what makes this uh, so interesting. Once you start bringing back the Borg, we know that they're gonna. This storyline is gonna get incredibly juicy and scintillating for those of us that are interested in watching how the Borg operate. And clearly, they are back, and they look like they're more powerful than ever. So, um, I think that's just going to open up so much storyline for seven to nine character for Picard, who's already had dealt dealings with them. It's going to bring up so many kind of conflict situations in the future. So um, that's why I think that this episode is, has done a good job at kind of setting the foundation for what to, what's to come in this second season. Mm -hmm. Speaking of juicy, do you see those tendrils that came out of the uh, board queen? <laughs> do you see that? Man, uh, in, in 20 years, they sure have uh, evolved and improved. Like suddenly she's like fully, you know, cloaked in this, you know, techno something. I don't know who they assimilated, but they assimilated somebody with some serious technology and made a big technological yeah. jump there because she yeah. was indestructible. She was like a, you know, she was like an X-Men or an Avenger, you know, she was just crazy badass. And like, that's pretty worrisome for them if they're like, well, that's one Borg that was about to wipe out our, our entire fleet. Pretty cool, though. Yeah. Um, not only that, but was able to penetrate and, and beam down to the ship through the shields, which I don't think, you know they didn't think was possible. So that's mm -hmm. kind of the ability that it has. Um, and the other thing was how it was able to essentially not only just take over that ship, but all of the ships at once. So it was like, yeah. <laughs> you know, it's this, it's, it's an incredibly powerful thing that we're dealing with. Um, the other thing I thought they kind of said, said a little, you know, I don't know, a little foreshadowing for what might be to come is when the Borg said, look up right isn't that what it said yeah. at the end like his mom did With, like his mom did kind look of the stars think... or something like that which was yeah. such a cute and brilliant title for the episode star gazer now the ship is the stargazer one word but they entitled it star space gazer because he was the stargazer in this episode looking up at the stars really cool right. Uh, we're going to see about this Borg stuff, and it, it's it's going to get ugly, and I like it. Um, I wanted to also give a little shout out to the set design for the uh, when they were when they were on that Raritan Four moon or for the and meeting the Deltas that you were talking about. Yeah, uh, that pool and that whole little you know set looked awesome to me a little bit. So I, I liked it. I don't know where they filmed it, but. It looked like a place I want to hang out and have some drinks with. <laughs> <laughs> I was very impressed with the set design, the production design throughout, yeah. whether it be in that broken solarium or whatever Picard, you know, visits where, where, you know, he remembers with his mom or whether mm -hmm. it be 
on a different planet or whether it be those incredible starship interiors that just looked beautiful you know picard even made a a mention of that he was just like wow Mm -hmm. this looks amazing i forgot what he said but it was funny you know he said something like you know the the newer these are the older they look or something i don't remember exactly what he said i I put it in my notes but yeah it was it was a it was a reference to how good it looked actually Mm -hmm. you know like they don't make they didn't make them this good back in my day um, and clearly the set design is just amazing on all of the all of these things. I also, um, you know, wardrobe always gets an extra shout out for me because of the work that they put in. I love the com badge that they designed yes. for Picard. It was kind of new. It had this red line running. It looked through amazing. It. it was huge. It was a big man. It was awesome. It looked so cool. It looked like what an admiral should be wearing, right? Mm-hmm. <laughs> so I like I like those kinds of details. Um, that badge was cool. Also, we got to see the USS, uh, this new Stargazer, mm-hmm. and it had this the X-wing engine on the back end of it. So it had yeah, like the four four nacelles, yeah, yeah, um, which I, I didn't really pay attention to before. So I don't know if we'd seen that before, but I was kind of. Uh, like, hey, look at the back of that thing. That looks pretty like cool. A, yeah, some of the like ships a, have two. Most of them seem to have two nacelles. Some have four, and we've seen some with one. We've seen some with three as well. Uh, but yeah, four kind of looks the coolest, doesn't it? <laughs> yeah, that one is, the, it could be the, uh, they need to make one of those and call it the USS that's Malcolm X. Hey! it does have that. It has that X logo from the back. I like it. <laughs> yeah. The brother Mal. Um, Sorry and Brandy made a, a nice little uh, cameo in this too. And it looked really tasty too when they were sipping it. Whatever it was, exactly. I don't know. But it looked That's good. That's that hooch. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, okay. So we only have a couple minutes left before we hop into a very special edition of the free for all everybody but uh let's not forget to mention our buddy rafi musiker who is now commanding her own ship as far as i could tell she's a commander but she is in charge of her own ship which was the uss excelsior also looked really cool but obviously we didn't see nearly as much of it as we saw of the stargazer which by the way i looked in my notes picard called it sleeker this certainly is sleeker than my stargazer or whatever he <laughs> says. Um, also, when Picard dies and there's a big self-destruct thing, I thought it was wonderful that they were playing one of my favorites, Edith Piaf, uh, her song about uh, Je ne regrette de rien. It's a really popular song from like, I don't even know, like 70 years ago or something like that. She's, she's a very famous French singer and uh made me happy at least to to hear that and then he got uh, I, I i thought her name was edith p laugh edith, <laughs> edith the way you just said it it's, it's i didn't it's but i know what you're talking PF. about i've heard her music before yeah pf PF. is like a small bird i think it's like a sparrow or something like that and she she was discovered because she was she grew up as a homeless girl with her homeless mom and they would sit on the sidewalk and she would, you know, she was like four or five years old and she would sing. So when they were panhandling, she would sing and people would give her, a, you know, a, a coin or something like that. And then she eventually got, and, you know, she was so small and tiny, like a little sparrow that they gave her the last name PF. I don't know what her real last name was, but anyway, so that's, that's kind of her story. And she, it's a story of like amazing tragedy. And some of her songs are just, whew. So sad. Yeah, I don't pretty. know what she said, but I've heard her music. I've listened to it. A friend of mine gave me a, a copy of her music a long time ago, about oh, cool. 15, 20 years ago. So I've listened to her many times and I, I appreciate the music, even though I don't understand what she's saying. But it does sound, it has that 1930s mm-hmm. kind of feel to it, old school. The when you last, thing I wanna, last thing I want to, last thing I want to throw out too, real quick, is I just remembered that. When Q shows up, and Picard is cracked me up because he's like, "Oh no, 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 no! 
no, no, no. <laughs> I was just like, yeah, we, we know what he's feeling. He's just like, oh, God. Like, he's not like, oh, cute old pal. He's just like, oh, God, are you serious? Still with this guy? <laughs> now, what did he cute mean when he says the trial the trial doesn't end or so what was he talking about in the very first episode encounter at far point of the next generation uh q shows up and puts picard on trial and he says no you're not on trial all of humanity is on trial um what do you call him a childlike savage race i think is what he called the humans and so every once in a while when he would show up again throughout the next generation he, you know, especially in the last episode, he reminds him, hey, the trial never ends. Just because I let you survive and I let humanity continue on all those years ago doesn't mean the trial ended. It continues on. So now he's coming back saying, hey, long time no see, cuz. So uh, let's revisit that trial. And Picard's just like, Jesus Christ. Still it's like the time. damn trial's not over. Is it? <laughs> <laughs> it's like, I got enough things going on right now. Yeah. So uh, before we head. So, into- yeah, I'm really looking forward to this next episode, by the way. They, um, and that to me is the mark of uh, one of these great episodes is when you see it and you're like, oh, I can't wait to see what happens next week. This is mm-hmm. one of those. Yeah, I'm really looking forward to it. And uh, next week is going to be freaking amazing. Book it. Uh, we also want to give a very special thanks uh, before we hit the free for all to Carmen, aka Skillet, CJ Jackson Bay out in Missouri, Bill Bay Victor Arukin, <laughs> Yvette Blackman, Homer Freezy out somewhere in New Yeezy, Eve England out in Wales, Dr. Anne Marie Siegel, Titus Muller, Tim Baum, the aforementioned, Darlena Marie, John Mann, Dr. Muhammad Noor. Joe Balserati, Tierney C. Deepman, Michelle Melendez, Marsha Classic Schreier, on a post, Jenna Appleton, Frank Sobozhensky, and of course, Dr. Susan B. Gruner. We will see you all on the free for all, and we'll be right back on the seventh rule. Hello, everybody. Welcome back to a very special edition of the seventh rule. This is the free for all with Sorak Lofton. Hello, hello. We are also joined by Dr. Susan B. Gruner. We have Dr. Muhammad Noor. We have Dr. Anne Marie Siegel. Uh, I'm not a doctor. Uh, we also have on a post here and Darlena Marie Blander joining us. Boy, oh boy, let's talk a little bit about Star Trek Picard and Star Trek in general. So everybody at home, full disclosure, everybody who has joined in after uh, for the free-for-all has not seen the first episode of Picard yet. So if they say something uh, incorrect or a guess or a prediction or a hope that's not right, don't trash them too hard in the, <laughs> in the live chat. Don't blame. <laughs> don't, they haven't seen it yet, okay? Um, but let's just start with you, Anne-Marie. How much did you love season one of Star Trek Picard? Okay, first of all, well, obviously <laughs> I loved it so much, but my favorite thing of all was when they set up the Delta Shield in Times Square on the day that it premiered and I wore my Captain Nog Forever shirt and me and mm. my parents were on like right. the cover of Star Trek.com's article about um, January going on in Star Trek. Yeah. yeah. And that's how we met our friends in Italy um, talking oh. Trek Italia. I think one of them actually lives here. Or somehow they got like one of the publicity pictures and then they contacted me asking if they could share it. And I was like, you can, if you talk about seventh rule in your article. And there it is. Well, that's the one of me, but the one on star trek.com actually Look, is me and my parents. She's wearing her captain Nog forever yeah. shirt. How cool is that? Yeah. Uh, in the middle of right Manhattan. In the, uh, in the logo. That's it was so, so fun. It was fun. Yeah. The one of me and my I, parents I was like pinned on Twitter. Actually. Oh, you were there? Oh, you saw that, Darlena? Yeah, uh, we all took pictures there by the Delta. Yeah, wow. right before this, Good. right before our screening party. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Darlena threw a massive screening party like that night that was packed to the brim, standing room only. Okay, so fun. 
Um, so your parents were in this article too? Is it? Oh yeah. B- okay. All of you? <laughs> yeah. So my parents happened to be visiting me and my sister that day. And TNG is so special because that's how I got into Star Trek, like growing up watching it at bedtime with my dad. So they were in town bedtime. and I was like, okay, let's start waiting. They like open up her pictures at 10. So let's get there at nine. So we were like first in line for the pictures. And that's when all the press was there um, doing all of the like PR stuff. So it's me and my mom and dad. And that's the picture that went out on Star Trek.com and everything, which is so special because Star Trek's so multi-generational. I just love it. Yes, yes. Okay. Nice. So Darlena, I try to do a quick scan for of you on uh for the Picard Day thing. I couldn't find it, but I did see this instead. So this is almost as cool. <laughs> okay. It's you and Jordy. Oh, oh my god. Oh, Where did you find that? Ryan. <laughs> yeah. Hey, Bar, what's up? <laughs> <laughs> oh what, my God. Yeah, yeah. what y'all about to do, Darlena? That's hilarious. What y'all about to go into the back room? Yeah, boy. <laughs> Darlena. Help him with his eyesight. How excited would you be if LeVar Burton showed up in Picard season two or season three? Oh, I'd be very excited. That would be really awesome. I kind of half expect it. Um, you know, from the episodes that I've seen, you know, and seeing the the cast members show up little by little, and then Jerry Ryan, I, I just I was floored. It was like a great reunion. Yeah. And um, you know, and I liked the storyline. I liked where it was going. It was different. It was unique. And it was just great seeing everyone. It was great having another incarnation. And like Anne Marie said, we had this a really great party. It was really great. Just being around Star Trek fans and what I love is that there was a lot of Star Trek fans who saw it like, you know, the, the the night before the party and still came to the party because it's like it's nothing like watching the Star Trek episode with Star Trek fans. You know, you've seen it a hundred times. So, mm-hmm. You know, and everyone was just excited about the the new incarnation and was waiting for it. So, you know, I was so glad that, you know, Patrick Stewart and everyone's healthy and still able to go on, you know? That that really made me happy, you know? I really, really like that. So mm-hmm. I still I still have to catch up on a couple of episodes. Um, but yeah, I was very pleased with the season, how it was going. Mm-hmm. I'm hoping if uh, Jordy does show up, it's similar to that beautiful moment in All Good Things where he's like, Captain, we got something wrong with the flux, whatever, inverted power related or some such thing. And he's like, Jordy, how are you? And uh, <laughs> yes. I, now it'll be even more yes. beautiful. Yes. Mm-hmm. <laughs> that would be awesome. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and hear him say it just like that, too. <laughs> <laughs> or better, probably. Probably better. <laughs> Uh, well, on a post, mm-hmm. um, boy, you are a huge, but you said you own season one of Star Trek Picard. Do you have an all time favorite moment in that whole first season? Oh, geez. Um, I don't know if I have an all time favorite moment I think it's more all of the moments of like the fan service connections where like Mm. seven shows up and Hugh shows up and oh man I did love when Hugh like sacrificed himself because again I'm depressing but um like (laughs) I didn't like that he died but you know when he made that sacrifice and like when seven plugged in and kind of became the board queen I that was um that was really fun and then of course the reunion on Nepenthe and all of those and I think I think maybe though my favorite moment might have been when you know Data just sort of disappeared and you know he went to like was by himself in the room and just sort of like you know a nice quiet goodbye to data like i i just thought that was beautiful uh spoiler alert everybody but if you're watching (laughs) season two episode one review you've seen season one probably right (laughs) (laughs) so i think it's fine um dr susan b gruner 
you said you actually really didn't care for Picard season one. So. No, <laughs> never... I, I like <laughs> no, it. I actually like it. <laughs> Did you have any favorite moments that you really liked in uh, season oh, one? Oh, I love that they're, they're bringing people back. It's, I think that's what everybody loves. Uh, my favorite moment actually was a horrible moment, but that they did it. You know, I'm heartbroken that they killed off Hugh, but I thought it was br- brilliant the way they did it. I I was crying. I, I uh, yeah. yeah, I was. Mm. I went, Hugh, no! <laughs> you! <laughs> I don't understand these people. <laughs> But yeah, that that was my favorite favorite moment. It got a it got a real uh, reaction from me. It, television, it's not all shows, but good shows can do that to you. They can literally mm-hmm. make you cry. That to oh, me yeah. has been TV. Uh, for me, it's Family Feud. It's just. Ugh. <laughs> Uh, what are you looking forward to or hoping to see in season two? Oh, definitely Guinan. I want her back. <laughs> hmm. Hmm. I'll take any of them, though. I think but you I may be pleased, right, Ciroc? <laughs> I hope so. I really hope so. Hmm. Well, uh, Dr. Muhammad Noor, can you tell everybody what uh, we can look forward to in season two? Oh, sure. We'll <laughs> just... it all out. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I don't know, actually. Now, did you have any uh, favorite moments in uh, season one? I love the pilot. I actually thought it was, you know, up until that point, potentially like one of the best pilots in all the Star Trek series. I mean, and it, it was nice having, you know, Jean-Luc back as a character. That, that That's, you know, that's well enough. And I appreciate fan service in general, but I really like, there was a lot, there was intensity to it. There was plot, there was intrigue, you know, the, the interview that he did with the news service, that was fascinating. What was going on with Dodge and the Dodge going around and the Dodge getting blown up. And we're like, wait, isn't that a main character? How does she just get blown up? You know? Yeah. <laughs> so. I, I really, really enjoyed the pilot a lot. That was probably like the, my, my favorite episode even of the of the series through season one. I enjoyed the rest too. I mean, they were fine, but uh, like that one was like, whoa, that's a very high bar. <laughs> I have to say also like the really fun thing is the marketing because back in the 90s, like the later 80s, I don't know about you, but it wasn't that cool to watch Star Trek. So I never really got to like embrace all of the like publicly, all of the excitement and it's, like totally. today, I went on a walk for a few hours around Manhattan, and it's just so much fun seeing the billboards everywhere for Picard. And like, this must be what Star Wars fans feel like because they have like marketing. <laughs> yeah, all they're the real cool. On. Yeah, but they get to like, there's, they're always Star Wars billboards and things. And it's just, I mean, obviously, they do a lot of marketing for Discovery, especially, but Picard is just, there's something a little more mainstream about it since it was so mainstream. TNG was so mainstream. Mm-hmm. And like, on the subway, when you go through the stops, like every every stop that comes up now, they're Picard billboards like lighting wow. up. It's really, really fun. Nice. And yeah. like That's pretty cool. soon my guess is they'll be they were like putting things on the sidewalk that wears off like after a few months, but it'll be like how to watch Star Trek Picard. And last year they or last time they did like that really cool subway um yeah. promotion where you got the, the subway columns, cards yeah. and, and then the, you could only the get them. Cards. Yeah, and you could only get them oh, at yeah. stations that made a Delta Shield when you looked at the Manhattan subway map. It was a real, there are just like so many things that pop up like that. And I'm sure in the next week, it's going to get like so much more intense. So I can't mm-hmm. wait. And then also a shameless plug for Saturday night um, to probably go Picard viewing parties at Barracuda from six to mm-hmm. nine with two for one drinks and free drinks from trivia. What's to um, probably go? To probably go is a nonprofit for uh, LGBTQI plus. Uh, that focuses mainly on Manhattan charities, um, Star Trek adjacent charities as well. And mm. all the proceeds go directly to um, whatever whatever charity we choose to um, support during each TV series. And fun merch available at the party. <laughs> That's what we did at the party. We had, um, for the Picard season one screening, we had... Um, 
trivia, um, not trivia. We had um, raffle drawing for prizes, yeah. and the proceeds went to Doctors Without Borders because that was Renee's favorite um, yeah. charity. Oh. Renee yeah. Robert Yes. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Wow, so that's awesome. We're big on charities. Star Trek clubs in New York, very big on charities. <laughs> you really are. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, uh, we have a few minutes, a couple minutes left. Does anybody have any predictions or hopes or wishes for season two of Star Trek Picard? Mm. Well, I'm dying to know if when they go back in time or to 2024, I think on the poster with the highways and like people have been speculating that there was a sanctuary district poster in the background of one of those promo shots. Yeah. I'm dying to know if it's going to be some sort of direct tie-in to Deep Space Nine past tense. Yes. It's got mm-hmm. to. It's got to, my, right? That'd be my pick, yeah. too. Well, it's like a year later or something, um, 2024 versus 2023, I believe. Um, and also, they say in the episode, there are multiple sanctuary districts. But I would really like to know. And then I would really like a shout-out to Chris Brenner of Information Systems Channel 90. Yeah. Sirak, do you remember... Uh, do you remember that episode where uh, they go back in time and they go to the Bell riots and Cisco acts as though he is Gabriel Bell because the person that got shot was Gabriel Bell. So mm-hmm. this, so supposedly Picard's going to go back in time to like what a year after that. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So oh I believe it was 2023 that and then now they're 2024. And I if you haven't for... seen that past tense episode, so it's um, you had Iris, Stephen Bear, and Robert Hugh. It was fun to talk about it with you, and it was amazing. Yeah. Anybody else have any hopes for this uh, season? That was a good choice. I like that one. That was my hope too. <laughs> I don't know if it's a hope, but it's something that like has been driving me nuts since I saw the trailer. And it's just like a two second snapshot. Um, but I don't know if anyone saw that one clip where like there's a blonde woman with the curly hair and the red dress like jumping over the building or like jumping from a building or something. And it's just, it gives me Battlestar Galactica vibes. Oh, yeah, I'm cool. like, that's I'm like, like that's And I'm like, what, why of all of the things to choose of all of the looks to go, you are duplicating mm. like that one iconic Battlestar Galactica look and I'm like I just I just want to know what that clip is because it's been killing me um, and I'm sure yeah. like it's just probably a w- random coincidence but you know S- Star Trek being Star Trek it could just be like a nod or something um, but it's yeah and Dr. That's interesting. Dr. Trek, Larry Nemetek, he does these tours around LA and takes you to like different things that are have been seen in Star Trek. And I think he actually used mm-hmm. to take tour groups to Ciroc's restaurant. Um, and so I'm sure that after this season, it, his tours are going to like blow up with new locations to go visit <laughs> after like 10 episodes or however many yeah, episodes good point. in LA. Mm-hmm. Hmm. I can't wait. Hmm. I want to know: Are they going to bring Worf back in the uh, on Picard? Well, it, so Lavar Burton did like an interview where he was saying that at first he was a little more vague, and then he was like, "I'm not supposed to answer that question." Instead of saying no um, to like him and <laughs> we know what that means. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah, I hope so. Yeah, I want to see Worf. That's I'm what not I'd supposed like to, to answer that question. Yeah, <laughs> I wouldn't be surprised if by the end of the third season they have like something with all of them together. Yeah, oh, yeah. that would be sweet. I just need yeah. to oh, I need yeah. Picard and Crusher back. I don't care what anybody <laughs> says. Okay, thirty seconds left, you guys, because I was thinking the same thing as what Anna just said. Do you think if they bring everybody together again for Picard. one final moment, is Wesley Crusher a part of that? Is he the eighth or ninth person in there? Mm-hmm. Yes. No. <laughs> no. 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 He gets the respect. I know. I, I mean, he, he does the red the wedding. Room, right? He came back yeah. for the yeah. Nothing against Riker's... him. I just don't think they'll do it. He came back for Either Riker's Wesley's wedding. Either Picard dies. <laughs> oh, Picard's definitely yeah. going to die. 
right? <laughs> How I, dare I, I you? Would... Tagalog has 20 more want, years. Well, uh, we want um, on the chats. We want Mark, we want Mark Al Alamo. <laughs> I want Wesley Crush. Mark Alamo? We want yeah, Mark Alamo. Wesley we Crusher. want to cut. Okay. We'll see if he pops up. But if if Wesley Crusher shows up in an episode of Star Trek Picard, what will he, wear? he needs to have his bed head. Because <laughs> he used to always post pictures of like how he'd wake yeah. up and his hair oh, is yeah. like all over the place. Okay. Your impression of bed head. <laughs> I was like, does he have antlers? <laughs> what are you going for? Anyway. I just want to see what he wears. All right. Well, Sirach, this was, here's the one spoiler that we are allowed to say right now, you guys. It's epic. This was a fantastic episode and we're super excited about this season. What do you think, Sirach? Yeah, I think it's going to be a good season. A very good season. Thumbs I was, up. I was very pleased and it, it kind of hit like an emotional note and it was just beautiful and amazing and gorgeous. And, and just really quickly also to add to that, the characters that we've kind of gotten to know now, the Rafis, the Rioses, the Dr. Yeah. Agnes, um, I care about those characters and I want to see their growth and development. And I think, you know, we talk about the original series, uh, original Next Generation series cast members making their, reprising their roles. But I also like these new characters that they've gotten. Yeah. Uh, and, I, and I want to see them grow, grow some more too as well. well. I'm like super attached to them. And also... I really liked, I meant to say, in Picard season one, I really loved how they kind of echoed TNG with all their classical music. So I'm really looking yeah. forward to the score for Picard season two and Beautiful. three. Yeah. I will say the one terrible part of this episode was when they when it ended. <laughs> <laughs> died right in front of us, you know? Anyway. <laughs> anyway, we have to run. But thank you very much, Sue, Muhammad, Darlena, Anne-Marie, Anna, for myself, for Sirach Lofton, and for Aaron Eisenberg, uh, everybody's favorite. Thank you all for joining. And until next time, always remember the seventh rule. <laughs>